Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to The Social Regressive. Today we're going to be taking a look at this rifle right here. This is Cole's 458 SOCOM rifle. And tell us about the build you have here. Uh, so the lower itself is a DPMS with Magpul furniture. The upper is the uh, Rock River Arms uh, 458. So uh, it, what's amazing about this gun is it is incredibly light. Yeah. You know, it's a big old fat barrel, but it's got a big fat hole going through the center of it. Um, so today, Kyle, go ahead and tell them what we're going to be doing. We're going to be mounting the new Bushnell Prime Scope on top of the rifle. This is a 1-4 to four right here. It seems like this is probably designed for your slug uh, gun shooters and for some of your heavier calibers. Uh, it's definitely going to be for close range sort of work. Uh, yeah, a, a true 1-4x to four X, and uh, it has a pretty small um, diameter objective lens you can see right here. I think this is a, a 32 millimeter if I'm if I'm remembering correctly on that one inch tube and it does have uh, some very well machined turret caps and some really pretty turrets right here. These are uh, fingertip adjustable. You don't have to have any kind of wrench or anything so it's really neat to have features in what is actually a pretty good bargain scope. These are going to come in at a fairly low price you might want to check these out. Now actually I'm going to be taking a look at three of the new scopes from Bushnell. They've released three whole new lines all at once. They had the Engage last year and now all of a sudden they're uh, getting the Prime out there, the Nitro and the Forge and I'm going to be testing all three of those in some various challenges and on different rifles here in the future. But yeah we're going to do the Prime on here and this should be good to go for absorbing the recoil from the 458 SOCOM. And now the mount that we're going to put it on is a one piece weaver mount, one inch right here. And this has big thumb nuts. So if on an AR-15 you wanted to be able to just kind of tighten it down with your fingers, this is gonna do the job. In the case of 458 SOCOM, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, I think that we should definitely torque this puppy down. And I'll show you the, the torque wrench we'll be using here, but this should be pretty straightforward. The first thing we wanna do is get the torque right on those big uh, thumb screws down at the bottom. So we're gonna crank this to 45 pound inches down at those bottom ones. The torque wrench we're using is the Weaver torque wrench. And this guy has all kinds of uh, little parts you can put in there. So you can do your, your torque screws and regular Phillips, all that good stuff. Basically anything you're gonna need on your rifle. All right. All right. Okay. What we're going to do now is figure out the perfect eye relief for setting this scope up, getting it uh, precisely on the rail so that when he brings this rifle up to shoot, he'll be able to look just straight through it and then he won't have to kind of move his face around in order to see anything. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is close your eyes, bring the rifle up, comfortable? Mm -hmm. Now open your eye, don't move. Yeah. All right, now first off, as far as elevation goes, where's your eye? Are you um, low, are you high? I, I'm high. Okay. All right, so go ahead and bring your face down just a little bit so you can look through. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm, I'm gonna move this scope back and forth here until it's the exact right spot. And for this, you wanna be on your max magnification. If you are preparing a prone rifle, get in your prone position. Uh, if you're gonna be a bench rest shooter, get on a bench or something to figure out where your face is gonna be on your rifle and then adjust your scope. In this case, this is gonna be an offhand rifle, which is why we're standing right now. So I'm just gonna move this around, you tell me when it's perfect. And you can tell me which direction to go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm like perfect up and down, because that's what you're doing. It helps if you don't block the light. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good right there. Right there? Okay. Now this is pretty close. I think you could actually go forward with the two forward. sword and not cause any problems. Okay, good. Just tell me when to stop. Yeah, I haven't run into any tunneling yet, so I think that's probably that's probably where we're at. Okay, this is his spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to mark right up against one of the rings where the scope should stop. And now if it slides around any while we're getting things set up, it's okay, we know our spot and we can uh, fix the cant and all that. So that's the next part. We're going to take this to the bench, 
tighten everything down and figure, uh, well, we'll figure out the cant first, tighten everything down, and then we should be good to go. Pretty simple. Next, we need to find level. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a metal ruler and a spirit level, and we're going to figure out, well, first off, are we actually level with the rail? We're gonna use this little flat section right here. This is going to be our flat. This needs to be parallel to this right here. Now, of course, there are all kinds of ways to level a scope. This is not necessarily one of the most precise ways. If you have a precision rifle with a high magnification scope, you wanna do the one where you shine light through the scope and use a plumb bob and all that good stuff in order to figure out if you're level. In this case, however, this is a close range weapon. It doesn't really matter. We can do the quick and dirty method. I like quick and dirty. <laughs> good there. All right, so to make sure we're even on all, all the screws, I'll show you what we're doing here. Getting it placed, and then I'm actually backing it out until I hear the click, knowing that the threads have just engaged. So, right? There it is. All right. And then we're counting six full turns on each of them to start. So, one, two, three, four, five, Six. Now, going in the same pattern on each each uh, pass I go through, we're gonna do half turns. So, half, half. I'm gonna just do that until I start feeling resistance. So, continuing half, 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 half. All right, starting to get into resistance now. Half. All right, so after this, we're going to go in quarters. So, quarter, quarter, so it shouldn't be much more. There we go. And then I'm going to continue that pattern, go in a couple more passes, just because as you tighten one down, another one may loosen up just enough that it needs a little bit extra grease. So now that you've taken a look, what do you think? Um, honestly, I love it. Um, I was, I've never mounted an optic before, so I'm really glad you went through this step by step with me. Um, I didn't know there was that much to it. You know, mm -hmm. obviously I see the need for that much to it when you're, you know, shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor and you're shooting 600, 800,000 yards, easy. Um, this is, however, it's going to be more of a 100 to 175 yard gun. Um, mm -hmm. And I am planning on taking it deer hunting this year. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be real fun. They're basically just going to drop where they stand. Of course, that depends on me and my shot placement, but I'm competent. <laughs> yeah. And the, the rifle should totally get it done. This is, if there's anything about Rock River, they are precise. This is going to uh, lay the, the hurting on them right. <laughs> pretty darn well. Absolutely. And as far as the glass itself, it is incredibly clear. I was really surprised at this price point, um, how clear the glass is. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about all these scope manufacturers nowadays that are coming up with all these new designs. Uh, we're talking about Bushnell and Nikon and all the others. They all seem to be cranking out much better glass than they have even just five years ago. These new lines, this prime right here from Bushnell, is much clearer in the glass than you would imagine. The, the older banners, for example, they were fine scopes, they got the job done, but their glass did not compare at all to this. This seems to have excellent resolution edge to edge. This is going to have all kinds of wonderful coatings on the glass. We're going to do a full review on this, the Nitro, and the Forge, and then a handful of other scopes this year. I'm really excited because I'm going to get to test out a whole bunch of different optics this year. And we're not just going to test them by looking through them. We're going to test them in practical shoots like this right here. Don't forget that we have the, uh, the One Mile Savage 12FV project that we're working on. This is a precision 6.5 Creedmoor rifle. It started as a a budget rifle. Uh, it actually cost me only 220 bucks. We are working this thing up, adding all kinds of parts to it, and we are going to be doing all kinds of hand loading, making this very precise, and then our final kind of culminating test is striking our big gong target at a mile. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss any of this that's coming up. Thanks a bunch to the patrons of the Destructive Arts for making reviews like this possible. Um, they're providing, uh, well, they're keeping the lights on, they're keeping the cameras rolling, and they're also providing a lot of the gear that we're messing with on projects like this. I'll see you guys around.
There we go. Nice. Got it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.